Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about OBJ emitters in Trapcode Particular. Now, just so that we're all on the same page, an OBJ file is a 3D geometry file. I think it's safe to say that any 3D application that you would want to be working with would support the ability to export its geometry as an OBJ file. Once you've installed the Trapcode suite, you would be able to import OBJ files. Now, we don't have to go this route, but the Trapcode suite does contain an OBJ plugin that allows you to directly import OBJs into After Effects. Now, just as a quick aside here, if you've upgraded your version of After Effects and you simply migrate your plugins by moving the plugins from one folder to another, you will miss the OBJ parser and it will not be included. So it's always a good idea with any major update to simply reinstall the Trapcode suite so that you know you're completely up to date. So that said, let's show you all about OBJ emitters. I'm going to do this inside the designer window. So in particular, an OBJ is simply one of the many emitter types. It's the very bottom one down here. And once I select this, we've got a little warning here saying that we don't have an OBJ selected. So there's nothing for it to emit from. Now, you can locate your own OBJs, but particular ships with a pretty extensive OBJ library. So I'll load in a generic shape here like this cube. Now, because Particular is a particle system, even though we're generating particles in a shape, what they do from there is immediately start moving. You're not going to see a very well-defined shape. So for illustration purposes, I'm going to take this velocity down to zero. I'll click back on the emitter type block so we can take a look at our OBJ options. So in the case of a cube, if I'd like to scale it up or down, I generally would want to keep a cube locked in its dimensions with x, y, and z. This is why the emitter size is going to be locked by default, but you can unlock these and scale x, y, z individually. I also got this from a different angle here. Now, particular is going to randomly generate particles along certain areas of the geometry, and we can define that, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But if I'd like the particles to be more densely filled in our shape, I'll go to the particles per second and turn this up to fill in those areas. So right now you can see that it's actually rendering particles along the edges of this geometry. And down here in our OBJ emitter options, we can tell it to emit from edges, which can be useful. We've also got this vertices option, which isn't quite as useful because it really is only generating at the corners of the cube. So below edges, we have faces, and we also have the option to render inside the volume of the OBJ. Now this one goes pretty quickly, but just know that when you select a volume option, Particular is going to do a quick calculation of the OBJ itself to calculate that volume because volume is not something that's included with an OBJ file. That has to be manually calculated by a particular. So if you're working with more complex shapes, it might take a few moments for it to actually generate the volume. Now, as I've shown you before, we've got block presets that ship with particular. If I double click on this and I go into the emitter type, you'll see a little subsection here that is pre-made OBJ presets. I just wanted to talk about what the difference is with this. When I load a block preset that contains an OBJ, it's containing all of the information that you would find in this section, such as the particles per second, emitter size, as well as where it is emitting from. If I reset this, go to emitter type OBJ, and just browse the library, all I'm doing is defining the OBJ file that is being used as the emitter. The OBJ blocks are simply a quick and easy way to load in all of the settings that you would need for that given shape. And also, if you save one of these blocks back to the library, let's say I go in here and I change this to edges, and I go in here and I say save this block, and I hit B. This will be stored in my custom section down here with the rest of my OBJs. 
If I'd like to add my own OBJ to this library, I can click on cho Choose OBJ to load the OBJ library. And then in the upper right, you'll notice an Add OBJ option. So you could load your own OBJs in here. It will generate the thumbnail. And if I double click on this, it'll load that OBJ and assign that to the emitter. Take note that it is not managing the media file for you. It's going to leave it in the original location. So if I go in here to my custom OBJs and I select Show in Finder or Show in Explorer for Windows, it will reveal the original location of that OBJ file. This isn't the only way to get OBJs into particular. It's just the designer way of doing things. I'll hit cancel and show you another way of working with this. Like I mentioned, you can manually import OBJs. And this is including OBJ sequences. So we can have sequences of events, such as this running sequence of this horse. So if I select the first OBJ in the sequence, and you'll see that it is trying to import a OBJ file sequence. And I can open that, which I've already done, but I've done a second time. I can drop this into my composition, go to particular, emitter, OBJ model, and in the OBJ emitter section, select the 3D model. And in this case, I'll select the horse OBJ sequence. Now with sequences, you have to keep in mind that particular is generating particles at the points or edges that it sees at that given frame, and then those particles immediately start moving. So in the case of an OBJ, you're not going to see a whole lot of definition, and you got to really think about how you would like to use particles coming off of a moving OBJ sequence. So in this case, I'm going to rotate this on its side so that we can uh, get a better view of this and not look at it from the front. And I'm going to overlay another version of this just to illustrate what the actual sequence looks like without the particles constantly moving. So I'm going to use trap code form to show exactly what this looks like because form can also work with OBJ models. So if I go in here to my base form and select OBJ model, and I'll set the OBJ to the horse sequence. I'll rotate it on the same angle as I did the other one, and I'm going to lower this particle density so that we don't see way too many particles. Let's create a camera here, get a little closer to our objects. So in particular, I probably am going to want a lot more particles. Actually, it looks like I, yeah, I set these to two different angles. So this one is going to be 90 degrees that way. So we are using an OBJ. We are uniformly emitting them. If I set this to directional, the particles are going to shoot to the right by default. I'll go into the velocity and turn the velocity to a negative direction. I'll lower the size a little bit and probably lower the lifespan to maybe one second. I'll also go to the size over life and have these fade out or scale out over time. So in this case, we've got the 3D model that we can see via form, and then we've got particles emitting off of it, sort of like a mist or smoke or something like that. So this is the point that I was getting at. When you are using particles emitting from an object that changes over time, you really need to think about how it is that you want those particles to behave and what kind of look you're going for because a particle generator like Particular isn't going to retain a solid shape that's reliable from frame to frame. The remaining options you have in the Particular OBJ emitter options are really just for utility. OBJs are sometimes inverted or backwards in Z space, so to get them normalized with your 3D scene, like for instance, if you're importing a render and Z ends up inverted from your After Effects space to your rendered space, you can invert it here. There's a sequence speed here to dictate how fast the OBJ sequence is playing. So a default value of 1 is basically a 1 to 1 ratio from frame to frame. It will advance one file in the sequence. And you can also offset the sequence over time.
The normalize checkbox is generally something you'll leave on. This will scale and position your OBJ to be around the center of your emitter. And that about does it for OBJs within trap code particular. My name's Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in the next lesson.